Hey y'all, Reshermet here from IBM Engineering, and today we're going to take a look at one of our quick starts, that is getting started with IBM Engineering Requirements Management, Doors Next. If you do not know how to watch a quick start, please refer to a previous video titled, How to Start IBM Engineering Lifecycle Quick Starts. I'll link the video right here, so you can click on it and go check out that video. Throughout this video, we will complete the following objectives taking a look at browsing, searching, and filtering requirements, learning how to modify existing and create new requirements, analyzing and adding traceability between requirements, learning how to use chain sets to control change in the requirements, collaborating with other stakeholders through linked worked items and conversation threads, viewing the history and audit trail for requirements, and finally, comparing differences when changes are made. This video will be made so you can throw it on in the background and I will tell you exactly where you can click so you can follow along and don't have to be watching the video the whole time. To kick things off, we will be first starting with task one. That is logging into engineering workflow management. To start, click on Google Chrome, go up to project dashboards. That is the third folder over for, from the left in the bookmarks bar. Then go down and click on Avery Program Management. After clicking on Avery Program Management, we will be greeted by a log in screen. Click on Pete. Then scroll down in the menu that pops up on the right side of the screen and click Susan. Once Susan username has populated underneath user ID, click on Log In. We are now on the team dashboard for Hummingbird Program Management. One comment that I want to make here is that dashboarding is a common capability across the engineering lifecycle management platform. Dashboards can be created for the project or for teams, or personal dashboards can be created for individual users. Dashboards give instant access to the project data that is most relevant to you. Whether you're a test engineer looking at the current defect list or a project manager looking at the status of the project. And what's more, the data presented in the dashboards is always up to date. Another thing that I would like to note out here is that all of these individual boxes presented on this dashboard are called widgets. And just to illustrate how many widget options there are available within our solution set, go over to the right side of the screen underneath the grayed out save button there will be a button that says add widget. Click that button and now we can see a whole bunch of widgets available to us in the change and configuration management tool. But the thing is, is you can use a lot more widgets than presented within this tool set. If you click on the change and configuration management drop down, a menu will appear that will allow you to select a different solution within the Engineering Lifecycle Management platform. For example, I will click on Engineering Insights and say we want to add the About Me widget, we can click on Add Widget. And that will add it to this dashboard and it will be confirmed by a check with an added sign next to it. We can also search for certain widgets using the search bar that is to the right of the drop down menu, or we can page through widgets down at the bottom using the previous and next buttons. Another thing that we can do is we can select the category, so that could be all, engineering lifecycle optimization, or anything else that is available inside of the engineering insights widget menu. To exit this menu, Go over to the right side of the screen and you will see an X button above the question mark button. And we can see the About Me widget is available at the top of the screen here. Now we're going to hop over to the D0178 Traceability Dashboard. Click on D0178 Traceability. It will take just a second to load this dashboard here and we can see that we will have a bunch of different widgets available to us. Now once the dashboard has loaded, there is just one comment that I want to make to y'all, is that many industry standards such as DO178 mandate traceability. Dashboards like these allow demonstration of traceability at many different levels. 
quickly and easily. This dashboard, for example, shows tables of traceability from requirements to design and test. Which we can see on the side of the screen here, we have a flow chart and we have a bunch of tables on this dashboard. Now, I'm going to scroll back up to the top of the dashboard and we're going to go check out JIRA. Click on JIRA. This dashboard is simply referencing data from JIRA. This is an incredibly powerful feature for our engineering lifecycle management solutions and is able to do that because it is built upon the OSLC standards. And OSLC stands for Open Services for Lifecycle Collaboration. And what that allows us to do is reference data from other applications using third-party connectors, or they can be directly integrated within our solution set. Hopping out of this, we are now going to go check out Susan's personal dashboard. To navigate to our dashboard, go up to the User Dashboards bookmark folder at the top of Chrome, click on it, and click on Susan's dashboard. If you get a box that says, hey, changes might not be saved, should you leave the site? Click on leave. Once Susan's dashboard has loaded, we can see that she has a change request assigned to her. So one thing that I want to do here is mouse over 299 extend operating range. When you see a window pop up after mousing over 299 extend operating range, this is called a rich hover. And a rich hover is another common capability across the platform. Whenever an artifact has a link to another artifact, Rich Hover may be used to see information about the other artifact without leaving the current context. It works for any artifact, including links to designs, test cases, work items, and so on. It is a huge time saver. So let's go peer inside this Rich Hover and see what it has to offer. Click on 299 Extend Operating Range. This menu that has popped up right here is going to give us a bunch of different options regarding this change request. A couple things that I want to talk about first is the type. Clicking on this drop down menu will show us that it is a requirement change request. For example, say it wasn't supposed to be a requirement change request and maybe it was supposed to be an issue, we could change that right here. Getting out of that menu and clicking on filed against, we can see what it is filed against, and there's a whole list of options here. We can also change the severity of it. So for example, let's change moderate and click on major, because this is an important change request. We can also change out where it was found in, going down to the next menu, clicking on that, and we could change the sprint and also the base project. Here, the things we cannot change are the project area and the team area. We are not administrators of this change request. We can also see the creation date and who it was created by. Over on the right side of the screen here, we can add tags to it if need be. We can also click on who it is owned by and change that as well if we want to. Another thing that we can do is we can change the priority of it. Since it is already a high priority, we will leave it as that. We can also change that when it is planned. And we can put in a time estimate. We can correct that. We can also put in time remaining, and we can put a due date if need be. Some other stuff that we can do is underneath description, we can change the description. Another thing that we can do is add a comment to it, so that way everyone on the team can see what is going on. What we're actually going to do today is we're going to change the status of this change request because we need to start working on it. To do that, go over to the right menu where it says new with a drop down arrow. Click on new and go down and click on start working. Once start working has been selected with that drop down menu, click the big blue button that says save. It will take one second and we can now see that start working has changed to in progress. If we click on that drop down menu again for in progress, we can see that we can change it to ready for review or we can reject the change request altogether. Comment that I want to make to y'all here is that tracking and planning work is built into this platform and allows project managers to clearly see the status of the project. Work may be quickly and easily reallocated to just unforeseen circumstances 
or to balance workload, keeping the project on track. Now what I want us to do is go back over to the left side of the screen and to the right of overview that is already selected. Let's click on links. Move the mouse down to mouse over 4088. Remote surveillance should support a mission of up to two hours without a recharge. This will take just a second to load and we can see there is another rich hover available to us. Click on this artifacts requirement 4088 remote surveillance should support a mission of up to two hours without a recharge and we will be taken to the module where it lives. Now a module is just another name for a document. In doors next modules provide context to a set of requirements. Unlike a traditional document, however, in Doors Next, requirements are reusable. It can be used in multiple modules, removing the need to copy and paste requirements. In traditional document-centric approaches, copy and paste are clone, and own strategies are manual, time-consuming, and error-prone. Doors Next avoids all of that by allowing true reuse. Additionally, as you will see later, this allows traceability at a granular level. And I'll touch about that in just a second here. You've now completed the first task in this quick start.